Previously, with Rob and Sherry, they stock up the boat and get ready for a trip around Antelope Island at Lake Powell. In this episode, you're invited for a scenic trip. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy. Hi guys, today is Sunday, and we're just gonna go for a short boat ride today. Uh, according to the weather, they're supposed to, the wind's supposed to kick up a little bit later in the afternoon. But we still want to just get the engines running, go for a little short cruise, and then uh, we'll go be launch, landing the boat in some crosswinds. But we should be all right. Anyway, should be some pretty uh, pictures for you. We'll see what we get. Sure, he's gonna untie us. taking her slow because we don't know the waters here very well and uh, last thing I want to do is hit a sandbar but real pretty yes, I'm not the only one that drives the boat of course this is kind of Sherry's first time kind of but gotta start somewhere anyway let's look around
Okay guys, you probably hear wind, but we've actually done a big loop and we're actually getting ready to enter into the cut or what they call a man-made cut that they put in here and we've never been through it so we're kind of excited but we'll let you see what we see. Of course the sun's in the bad spot. Alrighty, well, we're lost. <laughs> we're looking for a buoy but it's really pretty and the sun's in the wrong direction but take a look. Isn't that pretty out here? Uh-oh. I think we found our buoy and it's over here. So we're turning, turning, turning. But we see our buoy finally. But uh, boy, it's pretty out here. I know the sun's in the wrong direction. I'll let you see this way. But uh, yeah, we're just cruising about five knots, being real careful. We're just not familiar with this area. So we'll show you more as we go. Okay, well, I think we found the cut. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because the sun's coming in the wrong direction, but I'll kind of show you. We're coming into a very small cut in the land here, and supposedly we should fit. If we don't, well, it was nice knowing you. I want to say, good, say your goodbyes now. Bye, yeah, bye. Bye, yeah, this could be the end, the very end. But, yep, we're going to hit the cut in a minute here, so we'll see. We just made it in. Uh, we do have a breeze here, so you might hear some wind. Sorry about that. So we had a good crosswind. You can kind of see how choppy it is out there. And uh, so that was kind of interesting, landing the boat. Uh, they said it was going to get windy towards the end of the day, so we kind of expected it. So, But it was a little nerve-wracking, but all's good. So I had a good time. I went all the way around Antelope Island mm -hmm. through the, what's that cut called? Castle. Castle. No, rock. Castle. Castle Rock cut. Anyway, that was kind of cool, so I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I also thought I'd take the time to uh, talk about this uh, our, the boat we're in. So you know, some of you guys always wondered, like, why didn't we buy a sailboat? And uh, the reason is, is we don't have enough time for a sailboat. And so we decided, let's, uh, we really would like to get back into boating, so let's get into a power boat. I thought I'd tell you, uh, kind of review with you one of the reasons why uh, we bought this boat and didn't go with a sailboat and the uh, reason being is uh, we don't have the time yet to put into the sailing like we wanted to uh, it's in our future uh, we're gonna wait till we get closer to our 60s when we can actually think about retiring and actually have time to go travel a little um, but the problem is is um, you know with Sherry working we're still weekend warriors in a sense and so this made more sense to us so why did we get this kind of boat well if you guys know me from the past uh, I used to uh, do a lot of fishing so to get a boat like this was not exactly on my agenda but uh, as in Rome do as the Romans I guess so one of the criteria is, is I, is I in the past I've had boats where I've always wanted secondary engines and backup so this boat is a twin screw so it uh, actually has two Merc cruisers in it 4.3 liters really doesn't burn that much fuel compared to what it could do uh, but I like about it is it has a backup engine 
Why is two engines nice? Well, maneuverability is one of them. Uh, that's really big. Two is having a secondary engine is nice. Last thing I could do is if I had two, I'd uh, put a motor on the uh, dinghy and tow us if I had to to get us back in. But so that comfort of having backup engines is kind of nice. The other thing is learning how to enjoy the water other than fishing. Uh, that's where this boat kind of changed everything as a big swim platform in the back and uh, uh, to learn how to swim in the water and uh, to dock and just enjoy the, what's around you is something that is new for me and Sherry. So that's one of the reasons why we got this boat. The other thing is we wanted to be able to sleep in it. So it's not a gigantic boat, it's still trailerable so I can move it around. So I didn't want to get stuck with a boat moored all the time. So it had to be a trailerable boat. We had to be able to sleep in it and be able to at least make coffee. And we do have a microwave and stuff. We can warm up some pizza or whatever we want. Uh, so then when we come to places like Lake Powell, which is a five hour drive, we don't have to get a motel room. We could stay right in the boat. So that's kind of some of the reasons that would be comfortable for me and Sherry. Comfortable for our pets, of course. Cinder's right here. Uh, and the other problem with Phoenix, especially in the summer, is trying to find a way to get cooled down. Having a boat up here in Page is cooler and it's a good way to escape the extreme heat. So the other problem is, is now it's going to get a little colder and as you probably noticed, we talked about earlier, we're going to take the boat out of the water and take it down south. And, and, and keep out of the water for a month or two to put some equipment on it. One of the things we want to do is put a uh, fish finder up here in the deck and uh, uh, I do I have to replace the uh, little stove that's in the kitchen down there as you can see. Uh, that one's not working. Uh, the alcohol stove works but the electrical doesn't so I gotta replace that. So it's just got a little odds and ends we're gonna do to the boat but uh, this has turned out to be kind of a multi-purpose boat and yes I can still go fishing no big deal um, just finding time to go fishing so today was a great day we did the big loop uh, didn't have time to go fishing because the wind was picking up as you can see in the background the winds blowing really good and I'm glad we didn't stay out too late uh, we could have made it in there but the winds blowing pretty good <laughs> So anyway, for those of you who are ever curious why we went the direction we did with the boat, um, uh, we definitely love sailing. We're going to pursue sailing, uh, just not at this point, but we did want to get back into boating, so here we are, and it's working out really good between the RV and the boat. Uh, keeps us pretty busy and keeps our lives very active. And. Uh, uh, we get to see a lot of beauty not only from our RV perspective, but now from a water perspective. So I hope that explains some of the questions. Uh, if you have any questions of things you'd like to know about our boat, uh, once again, it's a 1999 Maxim 2800 SCR. And it's got, uh, typically those have only one engine, but we have the twin engine. And uh, we're really happy with it. So tell you one thing when you got a twin engine and you pivot the, the motors you can turn on a dime it's amazing so anyway hope that answers some questions stay tuned next episode when rob and sherry take you over the bridge of the Glen canyon dam if you're afraid of heights this is the show that's going to get spook you thank you for watching our videos please take the time to subscribe and consider being a patron supporter there is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.